Hello and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with the Disability Policy for All. Today I have the great honor and pleasure to interview Congressman Jim Langevin from Rhode Island. I, I would like to thank you for your work on the Respite Care Act and thank you for taking the time. We're going to be talking about the Respite Act, so. Well, thanks, Liz. It's great to be with you. Thank you. The first question is, I understand that you're the original author of the Lifespan Care Act, and um, what did the Respite Care Act do? Well, that's right. I was the original author of the Lifespan Respite Care Act. I did it with Congressman Mike Ferguson uh, from New Jersey, and he and I were co-sponsors of the bill. I was the lead on it. And then in a Republican Congress, it became more clear that uh, that if his name was first, they would have a better chance of getting passed. And I really didn't care about who the credit. Uh, I just wanted to get the, the bill through the Congress, get an act into law to help a lot of people. So we swapped positions, and uh, Mike was the, the lead, and the, the Right Lifespan Respite Care Act was uh, was enacted uh, shortly thereafter, 2007, I believe it was, 2006, 2007. And uh, so it, it basically the Lifespan Respite Care Act was designed to help better coordinate different respite care programs uh, around states uh, to help people who are, who are caregivers for a, uh, an elderly parent or a sick or disabled child that have long-term care needs that are providing this uncompensated care but need a little bit of help themselves, respite, if you will, so that they get a little bit of a, a breather, a little rest, so that they can you know, go out for an hour or two a, a day or a week uh, to go to the doctors themselves or get other family members to the doctors, do the grocery shopping, maybe bring, bring the kids to the soccer game, but so that they're not alone, basically, in this, because I'm, uh, the, the life pain respite care is designed to help coordinate the, the, the patchwork approach. Some states, or organizations are better at providing respite than than others. And what we wanted to do was coordinate those resources better. So that's what the, the Lifespan Respite Care Act did. It provided competitive grants that states could apply for and helps them to better coordinate the patchwork of respite services that are out there. So we stretch those services further and we're ultimately able to help more people. So the, uh, the, the, the uh, Lifespan Respite Care Act has provided $2.5 million a year from 2000 uh, and nine to 2016, and uh, and we the the reintroduction the bill we reintroduced is going to request uh, five million dollars a year over the uh, um, uh, over the next uh, uh, five years. So we want to get about 75 million dollars out there in competitive grants uh, that states could apply for. Thank you. And you said that it will be reintroduced when. Uh, shortly, we're we're working on that right now, and, and it'll be reintroduced uh, very shortly. Okay, thank you. Um, changing the subject a little bit, I I also understand that you're the co-chair of the dis the bipartisan disability caucus. Can you tell us about the purpose and the goals of the caucus? Yes, well, I, I first created the Bipartisan Disabilities Caucus shortly after I arrived in Congress. There are, there are many caucuses in Congress, probably a couple thousand anyway. And caucuses are not like a committee. They don't have the power to hold hearings and pass legislation out. But a, a, a caucus allows like-minded members that care about a particular topic to uh, identify themselves as, as having an interest in that topic. And then the caucus uh, basically helps to provide a forum to educate members and staff about important issues and uh, hold forums and bring in outside groups to let them have a venue for which to educate members and staff about important issues. So I thought it was important for the disability community to have more of a voice and have a venue, kind of a, a place in Congress that they could come up here and both express their concerns but also, again, educate members and staff about critically important issues to the, the disability community. And so that's why we created the caucus. I co-chair with Craig Harper, uh, one of my Republican colleagues, and and uh, we do a good job, by, I think, of, of trying to uh, team up to help move uh, legislation forward or issues 
forward that, that help people with disabilities to live more active and independent and inclusive lives in our, in our, in our country. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, what are your other priorities do you have for this Congress and what are the biggest challenges for getting them done? So one of the, the key bills, in addition to the Lifespan Respite Care Act, uh, reauthorization and uh, funding that I want to put through, I also want to uh, put through the Transitions to Independence Act. And basically that would provide um, uh, competitive grants and, and support to states that design programs that get people out of uh, institutional settings and help them to transition into, uh, into uh, the workforce or into day programs, uh, but basically help them to be more integrated and, and uh, people with disabilities to be out there in the community. So it's, a, it's an important uh, bill and we're going to be introducing that uh, very shortly. The, the, the challenges that we face in this environment, uh, of course, are uh, the Democrats being in the, in the minority is uh, frustrating to say the least, but you know, our job is to do our best uh, to try to advance the important issues forward that we care about, you know, help working families, or in the, the case of the, that we're talking about here, and, uh, as well as with people with disabilities and people who are in need. Uh, and at the same time, not only advancing important issues forward, but also making sure that we're, we're holding the line and preventing us from going back, that all the gains that we may have made over the years, uh, helping people with disabilities achieve greater levels of independence, I want to make sure that uh, my Republican colleagues, uh, because they, they control the House and the, and the White House, I want to make sure that we don't go backwards. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can work closer in a bipartisan way. I'm always looking for uh, Republican colleagues that I can work with and uh, to solve problems together. I think we, we do more, we're stronger as a country when we can work in a bipartisan way. We haven't seen as much of that as I would like, but I can tell you that it starts with us as individuals. And on every major issue that I'm working on, uh, I'm looking for, uh, and I'm working with a Republican uh, on the issues so that we can hopefully achieve that, that bipartisanship that I'd like us to see achieved more broadly. And I know that there's uh, several Republicans, a few Republicans, I shouldn't say several, but a few Republicans who I think are concerned about, about the um, disability sessions and Absolutely. Uh, Mac Morris Rogers. So yeah, yeah, Pete um, Sessions and Kathy McMorris Rogers and uh, Craig Harper and uh, among among several others. And so uh, you know we find our friends wherever we can. And uh, Democratic Republican, we we want them to be up to speed on, on disabilities issues and how they can help people live more active and independent lives. This isn't a Democrat or Republican issue. It's I believe it's a it's an American issue. And we need to help people with disabilities to live uh, more inclusive and independent lives. And that is my goal. Okay. Thank you. And if you have any more questions about this or any other policy issues, please go to the AUCG webpage and look for this week's In Brief. And if you have any questions or comments about this edition of Tuesday's Whistles, please leave them in the space but thanks and have a nice day and thanks again congressman manager thanks liz great to be with you okay bye